In the simplest form of Swift UI navigation, we attach both a label and the destination view in a single navigation link, like we have in this code right here. But for more advanced navigation, it's better to separate the destination from the value. This allows SwiftUI to load the destination only when it's actually needed. Now doing this takes two steps. First, we attach a value to the navigation link. This value can be whatever you want. It could be a string, an integer, a custom struct you want to load, whatever. But there is one requirement. That value must conform to a protocol called Hashable. And second, we attach a new modifier called navigation destination somewhere inside the navigation stack, telling it what to do when it receives your data. Both of these are new. But to begin with, you can ignore the Hashable requirement because most of Swift's built-in types already conform to Hashable. That means int, it means string, it means date, it means UUID, arrays of those, dictionary of those, and so forth. They already conform to Hashable, so you haven't got to worry about them. And so, let's look at the navigation destination modifier first. Then circle back to Hashable so you can see what it's doing. First, we can make a list of 100 numbers, with each one being attached to a navigation link as a presentation value. Tang 50 y navigate to a particular number. So we'll say here, navigation stack, list 0 to 100, i coming in, and then, oh, hello dogs, a navigation link with a, a title of select i and a value of i like that. So we're saying that on the screen, show the word select i, that's the thing, select one, two, whatever, da, 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 like that. But the value attached to navigation link, the thing we want to actually navigate to is i itself, is the number. Good dogs. Oh, you're dressed up. Very pretty. Very pretty. Yes, you are. So attaching a value to this thing, now that code is not quite enough. We've told to I, yes, navigate to these things here. When I press zero, navigate to, to the number zero, for example. But we haven't actually said how to show that data. Should it be some text? Should it be a VStack with some pictures? Should it be a custom Swift UI view or something else? We just said, please navigate to five, for example. This is where <laughs> the navigation destination modifier comes in. We're telling this thing, when you're asked to navigate to an integer or a string or whatever it is, here's what you should do. Here's how you should show it. And so I'm going to modify your code to this. After the list, we'll say make a navigation destination for int.self. Destination will be some selection coming in, text you selected, and then the selection. And so what we're saying is when SwiftUI attempts to navigate to any kind of integer value, any int here, it'll give us the actual int, five, 100, whatever it is, boom. And all we gotta do is return the correct SwiftUI view for that. Now, if you happen to have several different types of data, you can have, add several navigation destination modifiers. Destination for int.self, destination for string.self, destination of array int.self, whatever it is, right? Have them all stacked up here one at a time. All we're saying is do this when you want to navigate to an integer or do that when you want to navigate to a string. And this works great. I can just press command R now, run it back and it should work as you'd expect. So I'll press five, boom, you selected five, or down to like, you know, 99, like that, you selected 99. And that works great for lots of data out of the box. Strings, integers, UUIDs, dates, da, da, da. But for more complex information like custom structs, that's when we've got to use hashing. Now, hashing is a computer science term that's the process of converting some data into a smaller representation of it in a consistent way. And it's commonly used when you download data from the internet. If you imagine, downloading a movie on your Apple TV, for example. That thing could be 10 gigabytes, 20 gigabytes or more, a lot of data. But how can you be sure you've downloaded everything correctly, all the bytes there, all exactly correct? With hashing, we can convert that 10 gigabyte movie into a short string, maybe like 40 characters in total, that will uniquely identify the movie data. This hash function, it converts that into 40 characters, 
has to be consistent, which means if we create the hash locally and compare it to the hash on the server, those 40 characters, they should always be the same. And of course, it's much easier to compare 40 characters here and 40 there versus comparing 10 gigabytes in both places. That's much, much harder. Now, obviously, there's no way to unhash data. You can't convert 40 characters back into a 10 gigabyte movie. It's not possible. But that's okay. The main thing is the hash value for each piece of data ought to be unique for the vast majority of cases and also consistent to get the same hash value for a movie every time. Now, Swift uses this protocol hashable a lot internally. This thing can have a hash value made of it. For example, when you make a set rather than an array, everything you put in the set must conform to hashable. That's what makes sets so extremely fast compared to arrays. When you say, does a set contain this particular object? What happen is Swift will compute the hash value of your object and then search for that inside the set rather than to try and compare every property of every object, which is very, very slow. Now, if all this sounds complex, remember that most of Swift's built-in types already conform to Hashable out of the box. And if you make a custom struct with properties that already conform to Hashable, you make the whole thing conform to Hashable with one tiny change. As an example, we can make a struct here with a UUID, a string, and an integer. I'll say struct student, student, Come on, has an ID, UUID, and a name, string, and an age, int. Now, if you want to make this thing, the whole struct, conform to hashable, because UUID and string and int already conform to hashable is fine, I can say this thing just conforms to hashable, and it takes care of it fully for us. And now that this thing conforms to hashable, it can use a navigation link and navigation destination. I could say, you know, uh, navigation destination for student.self is some custom destination. Student in. Let's go to text. Uh, you selected student.name, for example. It's no different from integers and strings.